I was born in 1932. Technology has left me pretty much in the past, largely because I tend to ignore it. Give us some insight into what your original Drive It Like You Hate It was tapping into. Uh, Drive It Like You Hate It was visceral. Its personality grabbed people's attention. Volvo gets over 25 miles a gallon of gas, just like the little economy cars, and runs away from other popular priced compacts in every speed range. In 1962, they were anonymous. They needed help almost everywhere in terms of an identity and a personality. We said, let's make this car brutally real. And so what happened is that Volvo sales began to soar, up maybe triple to what it was in a four or five year period. God, I remember getting in the car with this rally driver. He said, um, Emil, he said, would, would you like to go for a spin? I thought it was the dumbest decision of my life. This guy drove like a maniac. And you can drive a Volvo like you hate it. Cheaper than psychiatry. Uh, this is on YouTube? This is on YouTube. Yeah, you could probably see all of your old work on YouTube. What drives it from 5,000 hits to the millions? What, what process? It can't be word of mouth, can it? What is it that what is it what is the process that makes this thing expand at such an incredible speed? Uh, it, just it, posting like, oh, I, I, this is so amusing. It makes me laugh, you know, and all of your followers see that. Now we know who's actually seeing this video. Where are they seeing it? What sites did they come from? Let's keep it hugely informal. We don't have to worry about protocol or courtesies of any kind. First, let's articulate an objective, then a strategy, then let's look at the work to see if the work meets both of those criteria. He kept telling us every step, like, well, why do people buy cars? Why do, how do you compare it to other cars? He didn't push us towards his ad. He didn't talk about his ad at all. He went going back to the car and how do we bring out the relationship between you and the car? I think that's, we're trying to crack two things. One is um, reimagine this ad, but also to prove how amazing that, that the contextual advertising could be or. Have you considered taking an actual owner who may have 240,000 miles on a Volvo. I was looking at the, the Volvo 100,000 mile club, and the guy who started that is a guy who has 2.7 million miles on his Volvo. Oh. 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 Now there's, that's where you should, there's the guy. You have to get, you have to get a hold of that guy. That's great. He's, he's in New York. See, that, that to me is great advertising. When you can take something like that and turn that into a nice piece of Human film. That's a great story. Yeah. Boy, that is, that's, that's real substance. That's wonderful. How do we make that, how do we tailor that for Banner? That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if we did, if we did. The act of just trying to, to create something, and you think, what can I do to, to make it better? What can I do to make myself happy? And I think that's the first requirement, is if you make yourself happy, there's a good chance you'll make somebody else happy. And if you're cynical enough to believe that you're not, you're not very convinced about what you're doing, but you can convince somebody else to do it, you're dead. Hi, Emil Gargano. I thought at first, why would anybody want to go back and look at an ad that was done almost 50 years ago? And I thought, well, my goodness, it's an interesting idea that someone would try to resurrect work and see if they could use that as a bridge to uh, the current Volvo marketing and strategic considerations. When we stumbled on this, this story of, of Gordon, we thought, could there be a better testament to what Eamon was talking about in that original advertising back in 1963? Obviously, we're looking at this immense relationship that he's had with his car, right? 110 tires, 440 spark plugs. 2,143 quarts of oil. And what it really boils down to is three million miles worth of memories, right? So we've got this huge emotional jackpot. 
and using Google Display technology, we can actually send those stories direct to the person that they're going to be relevant to. Every ad is a self-contained story, but then, you know, you can follow the car along as it's breaking the record, like it's almost a live streaming from the car. The right. car is always, you the know, star. The, the star yeah. of, the, yeah. of the thing. It's that maybe we could actually outfit his car, uh, you know, to, to count where he is in this reliving of the story and then and then counting up towards three million. Sure. Uh, we'll, we'll do it very carefully so Irv won't well, get yeah, upset. <laughs> too upset, but. This group has put together uh, excellent work, I must say. And I can say that completely detached because I have no vested interest in their careers. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like you were inside some think tank room with us. <laughs> because it's, it's so aligned um, with, you know, we're a humanity brand, and this is humanity at its best. So how could you not think this is spot on? It's brilliant. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Wow, the car is in beautiful shape. Is this the P1800 or is this a different? No, P1800S. It's the S, okay. Well, stories. This is, oh my uh, God. Yeah. My God. <laughs> I thought my wife kept things, but. <laughs> you can drive a Volvo like you hate it. They're built that way, you know? They can take a lot of punishment. Wow, so this is a hell of a book. Oh yeah, oh look at that. Stamped out. This is yeah. mine. Yeah, yeah. 65 and 66. Yep. We're constructing this banner ad for a, for a tablet. This is obviously a really rough beta uh, test. This is almost like your sort of odometer. So if you just drag that little guy across, you can see that we actually start scrolling through the different stories and up here, the odometer's changing depending <laughs> on. That's funny. I think you're off to a good start. It, it has a nice feeling to it. There's a lot of warmth to the thing. And I like his homespun kind of view of life and um, the fact that you take the long road because that may be the best way to go somewhere. It was Marshall McLuhan who said, media is the message. And I say, no, the message is the message. No matter what media you're in, think about content. Content is what matters.